Hi, my name is Robert Levy, and today we're going to talk about rolling offsets. Uh, particularly the ones that I have shown here are uh, ones that were made using conduit. Uh, these methods should be able to be applied to either piping, duct, or conduit. So what we have here is we have um, a rolling offset that was done uh, using some conduit and as you can see here by the annotation is that there's two methods that I've seen rolling offsets done. One method is uh, where you have a angle here for these elbows that has not been defined. In other words, you go up a certain elevation, you go over, okay, and you go forward, and then um, the elbow angles will will accommodate for the uh, elevation change and the distance change. In other words, if you click on these elbows, okay, you will see that in properties they have a weird angle such as 29.951. They don't have a standard angle. So that's one way you can do the offsets. And it depends on the trade that you're in or the types of um, elements that you're laying out, whether it's piping or conduit. Now the other type of offset that I've seen is the one where you have to control the elbow angle. And this kind of offset uh, you have, if you click on the elbow here, you can see that the angle of this one is 22 and a half degrees and it's the same thing for the one up here, 22 and a half degrees. Now here we have the first method, okay. Now in order to do this most efficiently, okay, the way that I would recommend is to um, isolate the view so that all you have are the two conduits that you want to join together and create the offset. If you don't do this, you're going to waste time navigating views and trying to find your conduit that you need. So best thing to do is to select those two pieces that are at different elevations and just use your temporary isolate element tool. Um, that's, I mean, I assume most people know that, but some people are new to Revit, so they don't really realize that it can save quite a bit of time. So what I'm going to simply do is I'm going to go in and um, check my settings. Now this is Revit 2014. In Revit 2014, you can control the angle of your elbow bends. Okay, so if you go under manage and you go to electrical settings, okay, right up here at the top there's an angle setting. I'm going to set it to use any angle of fitting, okay. If you don't do this, then you're going to get a very weird uh, junction box or pull box, if you want to call it a pull box, um, and it will just not work properly. So you put it use any angle. And then what you do is simply take the ends of one of the conduits, right click on that little connection, and draw conduit. Now before you actually uh, connect the two, you need to check the option to go ignore slope to connect. Once you check that option, it forces it to angle and create the offset. And there you have an offset. So if I look at the, these elbows, Okay, if I look at properties, they are a weird angle, 20.7 degrees. If you're the one bending it, you can obviously handle that in the field. You could probably do it to 20 degrees, no problem. But with certain other things, it's easier to keep to the standard angles. So that's method number one. Okay, so now we're going to do method two. Method two is where we have specific angles that we want to adhere to. So if we want to stick to 22 and a half degree elbows or 45 degree elbows, this is the method. So what you'd simply do is make sure that under your MEP settings, okay, under your manage tab, you have um, electrical settings and you set your angles to use specific angles. Now this is a new feature in 2014, so if you don't have 2014 you could still do this, but you can't uh, 
tell the software to use specific elbow angles. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw some conduit in plan view and I'm going to do a zigzag and the software is going to stick to the major elbow angles for me. If you look at properties I've got 30 degrees. That was the angles that was I was closest to when I drew the conduit. I'm just going to align the conduit here on the left. I'm going to align it up to the edge of this theoretical box here, okay? Just so you can see what's going on with the offset. Now, all you do is you simply rotate the conduit to go up to the elevation that you want. Now, I have had some trouble doing this at certain times, and I'm not sure exactly the reason, but I believe it has to do with uh, the way that your work plane is set. If you set your work plane early on to a vertical work plane and you rotate it, I think you'll be all right. But depending on the order in which you set your work plane or you click on the view cube, I've noticed that it can it can give you errors when you're doing this this part of the of the operation. So I'm going to go to my elevation view and I'm going to select that entire run, okay? And I'm going to use my rotate tool. I'm going to set my base point to the center of that conduit on the left. And if you have trouble with that, just type in SC and it will override the snaps to snap to the center. And now I'm going to click somewhere along that line from my reference line of alignment. And I'm going to rotate. Now I've got the angle that I need. Okay, now I simply use the move tool and I move the picking the center point of the conduit, I move it up to that corner. And as you can see, when I move that elbow, it stretched out that piece of conduit. Sometimes when you do that operation where you move the elbow up, it doesn't stretch out the conduit. It actually moves the entire assembly of conduit all the way up there. If that happens to you, just uh, set your work plane, do the operation again, and it might work. Uh, you may have to just restart the uh, from the beginning, but I found that it, it does do that at times, and I have not been able to figure out exactly why. But uh, if it did work for you, then you should be all right. Just like me here, I used the drag operation instead of the move, and it still worked. So uh, you would have gotten an error by now if it wasn't going to work. Well, anyhow, uh, because I dragged it, these things became disconnected. And so um, I'm just going to undo that. And I'm going to, instead, I'm going to use the move operation because that will maintain the, the conduit connected. And make sure that you don't have the disjoin button checked. And when you move that up there, it should move it nicely without disconnecting anything. And that's it. Thank you very much, and I hope you've enjoyed that.